Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to test out the latest firmware that I received in my car. It's 2019 8.5 and the biggest change for us is the removal of the confirmation for the lane changes on Navigate on Autopilot. So let's go for a drive on some busy Toronto highways and we'll see what it does for us. So first thing we need to do is go into Autopilot settings right here navigate on autopilot customization and here it is what I want is enable at the start of every trip because I find it annoying to turn it on and off so we're going to do that so I'm going to leave it on mad max mode and here's the big one here require lane change confirmation currently set it yes this one update now allows us to set it to no of course here's our warning you got to be in charge yes of course and then the lane change confirmation defaults to both which is vibrate and chime I'm just going to set it to chime for now, so let's go for a drive and see how this behaves. So I have selected a supercharger that's near me, down in Markham. It's about uh, 18 kilometers away. And yes, I do know that uh, I have a TPMS warning on my screen. I just changed my wheels here on the weekend, and uh, I forgot to check the tire pressures. So they're about 6 PSI low. It's not a big deal for today. I'll get them topped up. We have an address selected, and I'm just going to put on cruise control and enable auto steer and we'll see what uh, autopilot does now just as a reminder here autopilot settings that i have navigate on autopilot turned on and uh, always enable at the start of every trip i have require lane change confirmation set to no and a warning chime turned on so let's see what the car does it knows that it needs to get onto the highway here um, but there is also a little bit of construction so let's see what the car does and um, we'll go from there. Yeah, you, my hand here, um, unfortunately, is out of frame. You can't see what I'm doing here, but I do have my hand in the lower left-hand corner of the, of the uh, steering wheel just as a precaution. Oh, yeah, the car moved over for sure. And uh, this is bad. <laughs> All right, so the car got confused because of the construction here, and there's a little bit of a... Uh, yeah, and I don't have... I lost my auto steer, which is to be expected here because I can't see the lane markings anymore. So I'm just gonna hop onto the highway manually and uh, we'll re-enable that. It was interesting because the car started making a, a, a beeline for the embankment or the, um, the concrete divider, um, but that's because it just couldn't see the, the lane marking. So I ex didn't expect that to, to actually work. I've made a note of this before, but um, one of the big improvements too here in the displays, and unfortunately you probably can't see it here on camera, but in my uh, instrument cluster or the binnacle here, they have uh, put some algorithms in to really smooth out the autopilot display so the cars don't do as much uh, funky chicken or uh, dancing around quite as much as they used to. So they've certainly smoothed that out and it's better visually. All right, so we're going to uh, get back into cruise control mode here. And uh, the car is dutifully following this uh, Ford Transit van. I'm just going to... Uh, okay, so Navigate on Autopilot just came on all by itself. It knows that we're on the highway. And let's see what it does. I'm going to speed up a little bit. We'll set it to about 110 kilometers an hour. And lane confirmation. I'm just going to wiggle the wheel here. Come on, move over. All right, we're in. Whoa, <laughs> that was interesting. Okay, I'm just going to put my hand here on the confirmation on uh, the steering wheel here. And the, oh yeah, the car is definitely moving over into the other lane by itself. The blinker stopped by itself. That on ramp was a little bit short, which uh, kind of explains why the car went a little long on that, but it did move over all by itself. And I do have my hand resting on the steering wheel in the lower left-hand corner. It's kind of my usual resting position. I mean, you can usually do a little flick or something like that just to dismiss the warnings, but that's just kind of comfortable for me, so I'm just going to leave it there. Unfortunately, you can't see it in the frame of the camera, but trust me, it's definitely there. Uh, the time is currently uh, 12.30 p.m. We are not in uh, Toronto rush hour, but there is a fair amount of traffic today, so once we get a little closer to some of the other cars, uh, we'll get a better idea of what this thing is going to be doing for us. Maybe I'll speed up just a tad. I've got a van here to my right. One thing I do have enabled in my settings here under uh, navigation is to uh, use HOV lanes. Now, in our little trip here today, I doubt we're going to actually hit one of the HOV lanes. But prior to this update, um, it's not really tied to this, up tied to this update. 
the car would always make a beeline for the HOV lane when it was possible. So the car has now initiated a left-hand lane change. It did it all by itself. Yeah, so just getting back to the HOV thing, because I have that turned on, uh, if there's an HOV lane and I'm actually in this lane, the car used to automatically uh, put the blinker on and move into the HOV lane. Uh, and again, that's not tied to uh, navigate on autopilot or the lane change confirmation not being required anymore. It would just do that by itself. Now the car says it wants to get into the uh, to this lane and it's slowing down automatically. Now, keep in mind, I have this on Mad Max mode. Just for um, an explanation here, uh, a lot of people are confused by Mad Max mode. What Mad Max mode doesn't change, uh, what it doesn't do is, is make it aggressive in terms of how fast it makes the lane changes, it's the timing of it. So what it does is that it looks for other vehicles and it tries to maintain uh, you know, casual distance between them. So if you have it on mild, um, it'll be loosey-goosey as far as uh, when it makes those lane changes. But if you have it on Mad Max, it makes it a little faster. All right, so the car knows that uh, one of our next exits coming up is going to be on the right. So it's moved into the right-hand lane by itself. Uh, there are no cars coming up beside me. What I've noticed with this um, Navigate on Autopilot in general is that it wants to get into the left-hand lanes to pass cars, which is what you're supposed to be doing. And then once it's done that, if it sees the opportunity, it will try and stay in the middle lane um, just to keep with the flow of traffic. Again, rules of the road are you get in the left-hand lane to pass a car, otherwise get the hell out of that lane. So we will be taking the next exit according to the navigation system, if I zoom in a little bit. And there is an on-ramp coming. The car is slowing down a little bit because the pickup truck in front of me is slowing down as well. By the way, I have my distance set for cruise control to three car lengths. Uh, trust me, I don't want any rock chips in this windshield. I already had one stress crack and they replaced it under warranty. The last thing I need is uh, stones or anything flying up into my car. So I like to maintain a, a fair distance between other vehicles as much as possible. All right, so here's our exit. Let's see what it does. This is a double lane exit. So uh, I don't know if it'll move over to the right hand lane, but it should maintain. Yeah, okay, I see the lane change confirmation happening. Yeah, and it's moving over. Excellent. And there's the end of Navigate on Autopilot coming up. That's what those chimes mean. And it's slowing down. I got a little bit of a lurch there. I don't know why, but... Very smooth in the turns. Uh, we have a red light. Now, unfortunately, I don't have red light detection in Canada yet. And the car is almost come to a stop. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. Now, I've changed my destination. We're going to head back home. This is an interesting opportunity here because uh, the on-ramp is on the left-hand side. It's not a cloverleaf. So let's see what the system does. It does not look like it's going to take this exit, so I'm going to do it manually. So, yeah, it seems to have a propensity for doing clover leaf on ramps and off ramps, but these 90 degree turns, not so much. Again, uh, we're not full self driving yet. We're going to get there eventually, but right now, it's just doing the clover leaf stuff. By the way, I have paid for full self driving. I took advantage of the fire sale that Tesla had at the beginning of March, so that will involve a uh, upgrade of the autopilot or the FSD computer here in the dash. I figured, you know what, might as well do it. The price was right, jumped on. All right, so I'm just going to increase my speed manually to get back on the highway speeds. And let's see what it does. All right, there's the signal for the lane change. Going a little bit long on the on-ramp, but that's okay, we made it safe. The lane change has been signaled. Over into the middle lane. So far, so good. Uh, we're getting a little bit busier traffic up north here, or just ahead of us. So we'll see what it does. So far, I like what it's uh, what it's doing. It seems to be improving on a regular basis. Another lane change coming up here in the left. It's all clear. There's no vehicles. 
Oh, it changed its mind. Oh, look at that. Okay. I'll take that. I'm going to initiate a uh, lane change manually. Let's see what the car does. There's definitely a car coming up behind me, but there's lots of room for it to, to get in. Okay, I'm going to cancel that. Let's see what it does from this point. Okay, I'm going to manually get into the lane to my right. Let's just uh, ride this out for a little bit and see what it does. It's a bit of a reversal because prior to this update, uh, you had to confirm the lane changes, but now um, if you have the lane change confirmation turned off, the car will make the decision for you, but you can always cancel the lane change uh, by tapping the blue icon at the top. So the next one that pops up here, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can cancel to show you what it looks like. Again, you're always in control. You have to be mindful of what you're doing. This is not full self-driving. This is, you know, incredibly advanced uh, driver assistance um, features with autopilot. But uh, full self-driving is uh, definitely a goal that they want to get to. It's just a matter of how soon they do it. But we're seeing market improvements on this on the software and system. So. So uh, on my screen here, it's wanting to do a left-hand change. There's the blue. I can cancel it at any time, and it will just stay behind this truck. Matter of fact, I actually do want to get out from beneath this truck here, because the last thing I need is stone chips. I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you cancel it. I initiated this turn, so I just want to see what it's going to do. I just want to follow traffic a little bit, because otherwise we're just not going to uh, get enough variables here to be able to test this out properly. So we're coming up on another lane change coming up here in about 1.6 kilometers or one mile to our exit to get home. And here's our lane change happening. There's nobody beside us. And the car is gracefully moving over. I just turned the camera so you guys can see what's going on here. We're coming. I uh, think it wants to stop, but I'm going to. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. So here's the thing. I know some of you in the U.S. have the automatic stoplight detection. Uh, that is not in our firmware yet. I believe that it's a regulatory thing in Canada. We haven't seen that update yet. I'm, I'm expecting that uh, hopefully sometime soon. So that's why, um, in this case, I mean, I mean, well, let me correct myself. Uh, we're not a full self-driving. Uh, enhanced autopilot only detects red lights, uh, but it doesn't necessarily stop you. It's just a warning on the screen. So I have to correct myself. Uh, this version of the software does not come to a full stop uh, when you use Navigate on autopilot. So I have to be careful about what I say here. Don't, um, don't misconstrue my words here. Well, that concludes our short but sweet test of uh, 2019 8.5. I know it's not extensive, but the idea was to show you what it's kind of capable of if you haven't received the update. Now, I want to give you some thoughts. First of all, it's not perfect. we got a long ways to go with this stuff. But the improvements are coming fast and furious from Tesla, so kudos on those guys for doing such a great job. Um, again, it's like I said, it's not perfect, uh, you know, as you witness here with the little construction area that I had. Um, and, of course, it, it's not capable of doing those 90-degree uh, uh, turns for getting on on ramps and off ramps, but it's showing some definite improvements. Well, I have a better idea of what it's going to do when I go on a road trip here in about two weeks time. Again, some of this stuff is really geared for lane changes in busy traffic. When you're on the highway and stuff, it doesn't matter quite as much, but um, I like what I see. It's, it's certainly getting there, and of course with the advent of uh, the full self-driving computer that's currently now in production on cars and with the software improvements that are coming even faster, um, especially towards the end of this year when uh, you know Tesla says that the feature set will be mostly complete. Again, regulatory issues aside and <laughs> that's another thing altogether but it's looking very promising like I said in just uh, maybe a couple of weeks or so we should be able to see the progress that Tesla's made uh, for the investors that they're holding uh, it'll be webcast as well when that comes out we'll have more to say about it so anyways thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one see ya